We're here today with uh, author and, uh, and um, illustrator Jo Linsdale. Um, she's just released her new book and she's here to tell us a little bit about it and uh, maybe answer a few questions today. Hi Jo. Hi Virginia, Hi. thanks for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> well this is my first time doing an interview live so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> It'd be <laughs> there you go. How about you tell me a little, or tell us a little bit about your book? Okay. Well, Furry May is a rhyming picture storybook uh, for young children. It's about a young fairy who dreams of one day being a tooth fairy. Um, unfortunately, though, Furry May struggles a bit at school and always seems to get things wrong. Um, that doesn't stop her, though. She, um, with a bit of hard work and determination, she prepares for her exam. And um, I want to find out if she becomes a teacher or not. Everyone has to get a copy of the book. That's cool. <laughs> but um, basically, it's, it's a story about, you know, just because something's difficult doesn't mean that it can't be done. Oh, definitely um, not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of kids that have trouble in school, so I, it'll probably help a lot of kids identify with her, too. Well, it's something wow. that you can do with us, you know. Um, we have these problems where we think, you know, we're not good enough at something. Um, you know, if it, just because it, it doesn't come easily, um, a lot of the time we're sort of like, oh, okay, I won't bother them or something. Whereas, you know, I think it's important to go after your dreams. So if we can sort of instill that light of thinking into children, oh, yeah. you know, it's a positive thing for when they grow up in us as well, because hopefully it'll be one of those life lessons that, you know, follows them through. Oh yeah, I agree, definitely. You start them out early and then, you know, it'll carry on for the rest of their life. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> uh, do you have any other works that you're currently working on or are you kind of at a, at a pause right now while you're promoting it or do you know? Um, I never read really <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always got something on the go. Um, I've got another book that's I'm actually working on two non-fiction books and um, uh, two children's picture books as well. And trying to babysit too, huh? <laughs> and two, yeah, looking after two small children at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah, um, quite busy. Yeah. <laughs> We're currently fighting over a chair. Oh gosh. Um, Uh, okay, um, anyway, um, basically I'm working on, yeah, like I said, two non-fiction books and two children's picture books at the moment. Oh, cool. Um, so, hopefully there will be a lot of new stuff coming from me very, very soon. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and you also have promo day that you're um, setting up right now, aren't you? I do. Promo Day, um, for those that don't know about it already, is an annual online event for people in the writing industry. Um, it's geared up to the promotional side of things. Um, so like the emphasis is on like book marketing and you know your social media strategies, that kind of stuff. Um, it's a free event. It's open for everybody. Um, and uh, it, this event happens on Saturday, 25th of May. Um, oh, cool. Website is www.promo.info. Um, it's going to be video webinars, uh, forum workshops, a little bit of everything. Um, I'm still oh, cool. in the process of. I'm still in the process of lining up um, all the presenters and things for it. So if anyone watching this would like to be uh, a presenter at Primo Day, then they can go to the Primo Day blog, which is promoday.blogspot.com. Oh, cool. And there's an online form there where they can apply to be uh, a presenter and they can choose whether they want to do the video webinar or the video Oh, awesome. But it's a great way to get. Um, some extra visibility, build your author brand, and establish yourself as uh, an expert in your niche as well. So, you know, presenting, you know, you give up your time and, you know, you share your tips and um, advice and things with everybody else there at the event. But it's actually good for you as well. So, I think that's 
So um, go and apply now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this will be. I'm hoping that I can make it to this one. The other, the past ones, I haven't actually had the time to make it to them. But this will be my first one, hopefully. So I, I, I'm looking forward to learning a bunch of new things. <laughs> There's, um, it's a very action-packed and full kind of day. It's a one-day event. Um, so you have like this full 24 hours to um, sort of pick people's brains and things. There's lots of um, communicating, networking with people as well. There's also plenty of opportunities. Um, for example, in the forums, there's a special section for book promotions. So, you know, you can go there and blatantly promote the work. No one's going to tell you off for There you go. Um, there is a designated place for that. A lot of public actually attend. Um, and, you know, they will ask if you do work or whatever. They want to look out for new talent. So oh, cool. Also, a lot of magazines and things editors attend, uh, looking for people to send assignments and stuff. Um, so, you know, it can be good if you're writing for in-depth and not just public. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's a, it, it'll be a great place for people to uh, to learn a, a lot and meet a lot of new people too. Oh yeah, you can make some really really good connections, and um, I've really integrated the social networking aspect in it this year as well. So you know, there'll be like a live Twitter chat room um, where you can chat directly within the Primer Day event. Um, you can chat with the hashtag, which is PD13. Um, for this year, and the actual chat box will be up there. So everyone that's talking about the event on Twitter, that will be on there. Um, oh, cool. Looking at integrating with Facebook as well. So. Straight from our social networking guru, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I am a social media guy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try to be. I'm, I just don't have the time. <laughs> There are ways to do it where you have your present like online all the time, but you're not actually your computer. Um, oh wow! <laughs> some stuff you can automate to go for you, um, like your blog content and things. You can feed that automatically through your various different platforms and things. But um, which I recommend doing. Oh, cool! So, especially as it means that you can then um, you can even program some tweets as well that obviously don't encourage immediate feedback. Yeah. Um, using like socialumph.com, for example, I use um, sometimes for programming tweets in advance. Um, oh, Facebook, cool. Facebook now have integrated that you can program page posts in advance and schedule them. So really? Well, um, that's pretty cool. All the things are, are really helpful so that you can keep it constant without actually having to be there yourself. But um, the thing that people have to remember though is you can't automate all of your content. Oh no. Right? It's social media and you need to be social and you need to interact. Um, oh yeah. As well. So you know you need, you need to get the balance between the automated posts and the online stuff. Oh yeah. At least be there to answer when people comment on it. <laughs> Yeah, and if you are going to automate posts, then um, if you are going to automate posts, then you need to make sure you're not automating stuff that encourages an immediate feedback from your audience. Oh yeah. Because then they'd be like, well, "Why aren't you answering?" <laughs> yeah, you were just on. You can't start a conversation if you're not there to reply to people when they reply. <laughs> Um, so you do need to get the balance with it and, you know, think about what you're posting. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> You'll learn something new every day. <laughs> well, I'll actually, I'll be sharing um, lots of tips like this. Um, I'll be sharing lots of tips like this in one of the non-fiction books that I'm working on, which is actually the writer's not the side to social media. Um, oh, cool! That's going to be completely packed full of um, all these little tidbits about how you do certain things, and um, specifically giving it a writer in it as well. Oh, that'll be neat! I'll have to. De I'll definitely have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully, it's in the process of being written at the moment. I'm getting there. Um, so I, I had aimed to get it out for springtime, um, 
got up thinking about promo day and being my objective today, but I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to be able to hit that deadline on that yet. So I um, might have to push it back a little bit. But hopefully it will definitely be a advice Oh, cool. Yeah, I wouldn't over I wouldn't overpack yourself too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my my son's just come. They've been Hi. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is my youngest. Um but yeah, with with two children to look after. Um I do have my hands full. Unfortunately, I'm the sort of person where I get so many ideas. I actually, I, I never get like right or anything. I always have too many ideas and just one little. That's the um, best way to be. <laughs> so I, <laughs> keep it going. But I usually manage to get things done in half. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, mine's down for a nap right now, so that's the reason why you're not hearing him button in, too. <laughs> hey, Mateo! Yeah, kids are great. <laughs> you see, it just doesn't uh, you know, Working mummies, we can do it. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of people think they're, like, they're limited by, oh, I'm a mum, so I can't do that, or, um, you know, I don't have to. People that say they don't have time to write, and they don't have kids. It's like, yeah, well, you're you going, know, what? <laughs> if we can find time for it and we do have kids, then, you know, you're just making up excuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I think, though, um, a lot of writers, actually, they have this excuse of, I don't have the time to write. And I think that if you don't have the time to write, you don't really want to be a writer. Yeah. You're not looking at it as something that you seriously want to do. Because if you're passionate about something and you really want to do it, then you won't make the time. Oh, yeah. You know, you will find time to ride. It's not a case of, you know, I don't have time to ride. It's like, I'm going to make time. Even oh, yeah, if, definitely. Like, even if it's just that five minutes a day. You know, if you write five minutes a day every day, you will have a goal for the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even with just that, you will have a book. Oh, yeah. But, um, a, a lot of people, it's just excuses. I think my biggest issue is making sure social media doesn't take over my writing time. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, the marketing side of things does eat up a lot of time. It oh, yeah. Um, but it's also fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, I don't, I don't look at the marketing side of things as being a chore. You know, it's not the downside to being a writer. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just another plus. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually have both my sons here. Aww. Your sons are very cute, Joe. Aw, oh, thank you. <laughs> I've seen yours too. Yours is a cutie as well. <laughs> These little girlies in the future are going to have to watch out, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they're trying to climb on top of you. <laughs> on top of me, on top of each other. Aw. Yeah. They are uh, taking hugging to the extreme. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are cute. <laughs> My special boys. <laughs> but, um, they, they do give me a, a constant font of inspiration, though. Oh, no, don't put your brother up. Oh, don't it. <laughs> but, um... No, they are a constant fun of inspiration. No. They, they yeah, you said both them. of your books were actually inspired by playing with by playing with your kids, weren't they? Yeah, well, I get um, out and about at the zoo was actually written after the first time I took the eldest one to the zoo, um, and you know, even stuff like the crocodile moving in the water and giving the kids a fright that actually happened. Oh wow! Really? Um, yeah, he, he actually got very scared by that. <laughs> 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 
mobile in the water and all of a sudden it just sort of opened up its mouth and like leapt up and he's like oh, you know, so I, I put that in the book as well and you know all the other things that happened um you know they actually happened wow <laughs> So Fairy Bay is a bit more fictional though. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> fairy Bay is because my niece wanted a book about fairies um, and because my little one was teething uh, at, at the time, um, the whole tooth idea was, you know, a pretty common theme in our house at the time. <laughs> Tooth fairy was the first thing to come to mind. So um, that's why she ended up being a tooth fairy. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we should go ahead and sign off of here so uh, you can finish wrangling them <laughs> before they wrangle you. <laughs> Overcharged, kitty. Um, it's been lovely to get to with you. Uh, it's and, been fun chat um, with you, too. <laughs> for everyone watching, please go and check out Fairy May and um, my other books as well. And come to Promo Day as well in May. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what's your website again, Joe? My website is www.joelinsdale.com and on there you can find all my social media links. Um, you can also find out about like, my upcoming webinar that I've got coming up on the 29th of March, um, promo day, um, and basically everything is on there. So joelinsdale.com. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was nice talking to you, Joe. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.